What is the OMI token? Is now a good time to invest? Should you add it to your portfolio? Is this thing gonna go to the moon? I'm going to be going over what this project is, what I like about it, and then I'm gonna end with what I don't like about it. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This is for education, this is for entertainment educational purposes only. Let's get right into OMI or Ecomi. So basically the simplest, most fundamental part of this is that Vive is an application you can download on Android or iOS and you can trade collectibles. Now the important part and the cool part and the part that I think most investors are bullish about this project is that Vive has a large um, collection of projects such as Marvel and Back to the Future and a lot of big branded licensing deals for NFTs. So the I think the home run would be say something like Pokemon wants to release their NFTs instead of creating their own marketplace, they're going to go to a place like Vive where or Vivi where um, they've already taken market share and they have users and this is their business model is to get licensing deals with projects like Marvel and DC and Warner Brothers and all these big brands that want to enter and get a piece of the NFT space. It sounds pretty awesome. I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> That's my doorbell. I'm going to talk to you guys about what I like, what I don't like. So here I'm going to show you the brands that they've done deals with. Back to the Future, Back to the Future 2, Batman Black and White, DC Battle Statue, Marvel Black Panther, Cartoon Network, Captain America, Coca-Cola, uh, Cryptkins, don't know that, Daredevil, DC Direct, Disney, Doctor Strange, DreamWorks, Ghostbusters, 007, Knight Rider, Loki, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Pixar, Powerpuff Girls, Star Trek. Hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be giving away five Solana tokens to one of my subscribers at a thousand subscribers. Make sure it's on public so I can see that you subscribed and you can have a chance to receive some free crypto. Let's get back to OMI tokens. Here we go. Woo! This is pretty awesome to see. And I think this idea is very smart. I think there's a lot of potential with this project, but there are some things that I'm worried about and concerned about that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. So another thing that I like about this, this website does seem a little bit shady. Um, I don't, you know, I was looking for, I would have liked to see this in a block explore or something like that, but I wanted to see the number of users on, uh, on Vive and they have 500,000 active users, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, revenue generated 112 million, uh, number of NFTs sold, 1.9 million NFTs have already been sold and 744,000 app installs. So that's pretty, that's pretty uh, promising. And you can look at, I wanted to compare to OpenSea. Now, if we look at OpenSea, OpenSea has 382,000 users per month. Uh, transactions, 2.3 million per month. Um, volume, $2.5 billion in volume per month on OpenSea. So OpenSea is still the behemoth, still the uh, top of the food chain in the NFT space. But uh, VV does seem like they are, there is a use case for this project. It is being used, there are users. There's a total of 750 billion tokens. Um, and almost, this is interesting, almost 450 billion of these tokens will never enter circulation. So there are a lot of tokens that are not gonna be used for the actual investors, buyers, us who wanna buy and hold OMI. Oh, I'm gonna say, I do not own any OMI, OMI tokens at this point. I haven't added it to my portfolio. I wanna full disclosure to you guys. I just thought this project was interesting. So we have the, the reserve wallet, 350 billion tokens. These tokens never enter circulation. The VV vault wallet, 40 billion, OMI added for initial liquidity. These tokens will never enter circulation. So that's 340 billion that will never enter circulation. We have 150 billion, 20% um, for long-term initiatives. So business development. So hopefully this is, uh, you know, this is just capital that they that they want to be able to use to build their business. 20% went to the team, advisors, board members. So the company itself kept 20%. Uh, doesn't seem like a horrible amount. And then the private sale, 110 billion of OMI. Uh, it's pretty small percentage of the total OMI tokens, but most of these OMI tokens are supposed to be locked and aren't gonna be entering circulation. 
Uh, this is interesting to see here. Since the launch of the platform, 103 billion OMI tokens have already been removed from the total token supply. Uh, 97 billion were removed from the business development fund and founders allotment. Six billion of those OMI tokens were burned due to the uh, mechanism that burns OMI tokens every time a uh, NFT is bought or sold on the Viva app. Okay, so here I'm gonna try to explain how these OMI tokens work within the app. So it says here when a user purchases using gem slash fiat, uh, there's a movement of OMI tokens which are pulled from the in-app reserve wallet. Uh, in the background, OMI tokens are actually sent to the OMI vault wallet. If the gems are used to purchase digital account from another user, those gems transfer the seller's account, the OMI tokens remain in the vault wallet. 100% of the OMI tokens are pulled from the vault, wall, the vault wallet and permanently removed from the token supply burnt whilst the digital collectible simultaneously appears in the, in the user's account. So it's a little bit confusing. This kind of this shows you here the uh, the pathway of how these are worked. But basically, each time there's a transaction, some OMI is burnt and de decreases the total supply. Our basics here of the OMI token. Um, this is our price here. We have a market cap of 644 million. Um, each OMI token right now costs two tenths of a penny. Uh, let's go to say our 12 month. I like to zoom out. Um, now, so something that is bullish or not, not bullish, but something that is good about this and, and we have to know being in the cryptocurrency space is right now, uh, we're in the end of April, 2022 and projects are low, prices are low. So thinking of that now is a good time to get into things. And how does the saying go? A rising tide raises all boats or something like that. I don't know what it actually is, but basically the idea is that when crypto, when we get into another bull market, a lot of these projects, a lot of the projects are gonna rally. They're gonna go up regardless of whether they're actually intrinsically growing or the business is actually executing, we're gonna just see a rise in prices. So keep that in mind when you're investing or looking at this that you know, a side of me would think, well, I could throw some money in this basically because it has a lot going for it. There is an eco there is a community buying these things and it, and it, it could rally quite a bit um, when we hit our next bull run. These are our uh, exchanges. We're not on hardly any of the major exchanges. We're not on Binance. We're not on Coinbase. We're not on uh, KuCoin. We're not on uh, Kraken. So Bitforex, Bitmax, Gate, Pretty difficult to get OMI tokens at this point. Um, Gate uh, no longer accepts US users, so that is a bummer um, for them. But if we look here, it seems like we have a bit of resistance right here in this two tenths of a penny range. So we're basically right back down. We're basically at its low, its low, low. So could be a good time to get in. So here, this news actually came out in 2018. It's not new news, but Alfred Kahn did become part and became head of their global licensing at Ecomi. Uh, he's a, considered a guru of licensing. He's been responsible for huge licensing deals uh, right here, uh, responsible for some of the biggest releases in the licensed industry, including Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Mutant Ninja Turtles, Cabbage Patch, Polly Pockets, uh, this guy's been in licensing for a long time. So this is really big, uh, or this is seemingly great to have this person on the team because licensing, I believe, is also a lot about relationships because you have to get these brands to agree to let you use their intellectual property to make money. Let's get into some of the things that I am less bullish about Ecomi and Omi. So one of the things that I don't like about the this project is that when you start using the app, I've been using the VV app a little bit, when you start using it, you buy and sell using gems. Now, OMI token is supposed to be this token, this utility token that's being used and operated behind the scenes. However, you can buy gems directly with dollars. So you buy gems with dollars, then you buy NFTs. And also, you can't take those gems yet and put them back into dollars. This has to change. This, There's no possible way this makes any sense that this could be the business model because investors, NFT traders, primarily are trying to make money. And if you can't get your 
gems or whatever cryptocurrency you're using to buy an NFT and put it back into US dollars or back into fiat currency, you're screwed. So uh, right now, I guess people are just betting that eventually they're going to allow you to do that. Now, the problem is, is that I see if OMI tokens were the ones that you had to buy to then trade the NFTs, then that creates buying pressure on the token. Now, even though the supply is, decre is gonna decrease because there are tokens being burned, you don't necessarily even have to buy this OMI token to buy the NFTs or to use this app. Now, I could possibly be missing something, but when I look at the white paper and I read all about this and I see everything, it seems like it's basically just a scarcity play where it's just sh saying, okay, this, is, this supply is just gonna keep decreasing, 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 and that makes people, make it should make the price go up. Now, when the supply decreases and demand either stays the same or increases, price goes up. However, if you're not creating demand for that token, besides just a fear of there becoming less of it, that seems like the token, that's gonna, that could hurt the token price. Now, I could be missing something where when you buy a gem, you actually are also kind of buying an OMI token behind the scenes, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Like right now, you can just buy gems with your Apple Pay or credit card on your app, and it goes straight from fiat to gem, and then you buy NFTs and such. So that's one thing that I don't like about this project. And the, the what I've read about is that they wanted NFT holders to feel safe that the value of the currency of which they're buying with remains the same, which is understandable, but I feel like people have been spending billions and billions and billions of dollars on NFTs on OpenSea and Ethereum value fluctuates. I feel like that's kind of part of the NFT culture. That's kind of part of the market. And a lot of what drives the prices of these cryptocurrencies is people when they want to buy an NFT and they need, if you need an Ethereum to buy an NFT and you don't have Ethereum, you have to buy Ethereum. But with Ecomi and Omi, you don't have to buy an Omi token to buy an NFT. You can just buy a gem. So where's the demand? Okay, next thing that uh, is a little weird. So Ecomi is operated by Orbis Blockchain Technologies. So I guess it's just kind of another name. Now, this is the website for Orbis Blockchain Technologies. It looks very cheap and weird and kind of shady. So if you go here to about, these are the three team members on the team who should technically be running this whole company. You look at David Yu, the CEO, then I go into his LinkedIn and what's weird about this is he's been the um, founder for five years, one month, that's okay but he's also been the executive director of Benji Fintech for three years until now. He's also been the director of Australian New Zealand Chamber of Commerce in Taipei five years and four months. Uh, also a trustee Touch Touchable Earth Foundation for seven years and three months to, to present. He's still supposedly doing all this. Games Are Us Unlimited director, 25 years until now, still doing this. Uh, Taipei, present till now, retail management group, 24 years doing this also. I mean, either this guy's the most, and it's and it just goes down the line. He is the director of all these different positions for many, many years, all up until present. So he's technically doing all of these all at the same time, which uh, just doesn't, it's a red flag for me. It doesn't make sense. Something weird's going on here. This doesn't mean that the price of Omi is not gonna go up. I just don't like seeing this. So currently uh, this is operated on the GoChain blockchain. So it says here, due to the throughput and congestion issues currently plague the Ethereum network, Ecomi Collect will be deploying OMI tokens on the GoChain network. Don't know what GoChain is. I've never heard of GoChain. Uh, here it states 1300 transactions per second are on track to perform 13,000 transactions per second, which is good. That's That's, maybe fine for this use case and this app and the number of users. However, uh, that's not close to as many transactions as Solana or the potential of Avalanche or if you look at uh, what Kadena is doing. Uh, I did another video on Kadena. You can check it out. It's down in the description. Um, but anyways, the fact that it's on this, this chain, it's not on Polygon, 
it's not on any of the chains that, that we've heard of or know about. So that is a little bit of a red flag. I think that with this project, it's a great idea. It could still go to the moon. It could still be huge, but it seems like their level of execution and expertise and experience could be hurting them. And there's something that just isn't quite clicking for this project right at this time. Uh, but I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Keep aping, keep hodling. Woo!